when I first started sharing my work online, I completely dismissed the importance of actually learning how to take a good photo of my painting. At least I invested some amount of time researching what a great camera to buy would be. However, I didn't have any knowledge of photography. I thought to myself, hey, I'm a painter? not a photographer and I can already take good photos with my phone just like any other person, so how different it can be with an actual camera. So that led me learning through trial and error, which was a way too long process. I never got it quite right, but I also wasn't bothered to seek out any advice, which, which was a mistake. After countless and countless poor photographs, I finally decided it's worth my time to seek out advice from professionals on the internet, as I realized I'm not able to figure this out on my own. From there, my painting started to improve tremendously. <laughs> Not actually, but seeing it on the internet, that's seemingly what happened. But in reality, I learned how to properly take photos. So today I want to teach you some of the basics I wish I knew before. I started taking photos of my art for posting on social media, for taking high quality photos for my art prints. Also, I want to clarify that this tutorial is aimed at people who want to photograph paintings with at least some level of texture, for example, for drawings. It's, it's probably more convenient to use a scanner, but I have painted at least with some level of texture at all times, so I haven't really looked into that. I don't know much about scanners. So here are some steps to follow when photographing a painting. The first thing we have to figure out is where to take a photo, choosing the right setting. We have to make sure that there is enough lighting going on the painting to get an, an accurate look of the color and also maintaining high quality. The easiest way to do that is to find a spot with a great amount of natural light. If you have a house with big wide windows where there is enough light coming in, that might be a good spot for you, but I know my apartment doesn't have much natural light, so I prefer to take my photos outside. I place my painting on my terrace making sure there is no direct light facing the painting itself. If I have the chance, I choose a sunny day for taking the pictures, for obvious reasons there is more light outside. I have been living in this apartment for <laughs> quite a few years now, so I have exactly figured out when during the day is the best time to take these photos, depending on the exact sun location. <laughs> I'm pointing this out because, you know, for a beginner who is just starting out, this might seem like a huge process involving insane amounts of effort, but trust me, it gets easier once the process has been repeated many times. Fortunately, there is a roof over the stairs, which is a good thing, because that means that the painting doesn't have much light to reflect back on. There still might be some reflections to the surface material, but I will show you later exactly how to get rid of them. Artificial lighting. You can also use artificial lighting to light up your painting, but that's generally not the best practice for beginners since there are a lot of things that could go wrong. Uh, Alright, I'm going to explain this as simply as I can. We want to choose a light temperature that is similar to sunlight, which is around 5000 Kelvin. However, most lamps that we find at home are not designed to have the same temperature as natural lighting. But yes, we can adjust the white balance on the camera to make it suitable for the environment. However, this requires extra work and there is a risk of, of making our images lo look inaccurate compared to the actual painting. Also, correct white balance isn't the only thing to consider, there is also such thing as color rendering index. What does that mean? In simple terms, a color rendering index tells us how well a light source can make colors look true to life. A light source with a high color rendering index makes colors appear more vibrant, while <laughs> a light source with a low color rendering index may look colors look kind of washed out or dull, that's something we don't want. But luckily the natural light has the highest color rendering index, although there are special types of lamps made to produce light with a very high color rendering index, such as the ones I use in my art studio. However, if you don't want to invest in additional lamps, the safest option is to just use natural lighting. Alright, now that we have found a good spot to take the photo, let's set up our camera. If you're planning to take photos just for posting on social media, you might 
you might get away with using just your smartphone. However, if you're planning to create art brains, I would recommend getting a proper camera. So firstly, let's make sure the painting is straight and centered in the frame. Also, another recommendation is to use a tripod to help you give the camera at the right angle and keep it steady. If camera settings are adjusted accordingly, I would say it's possible to get away without using a tripod, but I will speak more about the camera settings in a moment. One of my biggest mistakes from my beginner days was not being able to use my lens correctly. I thought that the best way is to use my lens fully zoomed out so I could place my camera really close to the painting. I saw some huge lens distortion which, yes, can be removed through editing, but I like to take my photos in a way that don't require massive amounts of editing afterwards. So the question remains. How do you really use an adjustable lens? It's important to zoom in, maybe not as much if your painting is very tiny, but the bigger your canvas, the more zooming in it requires. The idea is to find the right distance between your camera and your painting that allows you to capture the entire painting without getting too close or causing distortion. Now, using our camera, I recommend it setting it to manual mode so we have a full control over our camera. Firstly, let's get to know the three most important settings we can adjust to make the camera take a photo according to our needs. Firstly, there is ISO, secondly, there is f-stop um, or aperture, however you want to call it, and thirdly, there is shutter speed. Each of these settings controls a different aspect of the photo, so gaining a basic understanding of all three will allow us to use them in a beautiful harmony and achieve a great result. Additionally, there is white balance, but if we are using natural light, keeping it on auto should work just well. So ISO, we generally want to keep our ISO as low as possible, ranging from 100 to 400, depending on the intensity of the lights. If we set our ISO too high, it can have a negative impact on the quality of the photo. F-stop was to open optimal aperture, f-stop, however you want to call it. I found that 7.1 works the best for me. But what does the aperture really mean? The lower our aperture, the narrower our range of focus becomes. So if we want to take a photo with a blurred background, for example, it's a great idea to choose a low aperture. When taking a photo of our painting, it's kind of different because we don't need to have a certain spot more in focus compared to the others, because then we risk the painting looking blurry on the edges. Thirdly, we have shutter speed, which regulates exposure. That's pretty much it about shutter speed since we can constantly change it along the way according to the needs. As a little extra tip, if your painting has already been varnished or is very rich in texture, I would recommend using a polarizing filter. What is that? What does a polarizing filter do? A polarizing filter can reduce glare, it can reduce reflections on the painting, making it easier to capture a clear image. Now, when everything has been set up, the painting position and our camera with right settings, you can see mine on the screen, it's time to take that photo. When using a tripod, we can take advantage of our camera's remote trigger feature and set it on a timer for a few seconds. This way we can avoid any shakiness. Another very useful feature on cameras is the histogram feature. It lets you check if your photo has been exposed correctly. So here is an example of how a histogram might look like. Um, as we can see, the area on the left describes the amount of darks and the area on the right describes the amount of brights or brighter tones. Ideally, when our painting includes pitch black and pure white, we want to see that reflected also on the histogram with every single tone represented. For example, if the image is underexposed, the histogram might look like this, just to show what we would want to advise. It's pretty important to keep this whole histogram thing in mind and expose the painting correctly. Although we can restore the tones in post-processing during color correction, but when it comes to art, we don't want to lose any data from our original piece. This is because an inaccurate representation of the painting would result if any data is lost during the photo taking process, which is something we don't want. After playing around with some camera settings, maybe adjusting the ISO and shutter speed and checking the results on the histogram and display screen itself, we should have some pretty pretty good results. When I think I'm done with the process, I check the photos on my computer. 
I prefer to keep my setup as is because <laughs> sometimes I need to go back to take more photos because I realize I'm not satisfied uh, with my current photos. There is also the whole color correcting part which deserves its own video? <laughs> Question mark. <laughs> Thank you for watching, I really do hope I covered everything, if not, feel free to ask me directly. Although I'm not a, some photography expert or anything like that, I'm still a beginner, kind of. Maybe not a beginner anymore, <laughs> but I'm sure I can help a lot of people out who are just starting. So, see you later!